everyone. Welcome back. Welcome back to Copa Extra Live. Hope you all are doing well. My name is Abi and I'm joined today by Ian. Ian, how are you? Long time no see. Yes, doing good, thanks. I've been uh, busy being a full-time dad. Life's yeah. been interesting. <laughs> yeah, your, uh, your dad jokes have exponentially increased since the last time you were live, so I banned yeah. you from the stream for a little while. Because... Yeah, people might have noticed I'm not tweeting on my personal one recently. That's because I don't feel like I'm interesting anymore. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not true. No, but uh, not true. yeah, and, and, and in our team chat, I'm just terrible at the jokes recently. That's what happens when you become a dad. So this is true chat. Uh, our, our team chat's becoming more and more depressing. It's, it's not yeah. fun. <laughs> that's why that's why we're back doing this because I need more entertainment in my life. But yes. you know, I mean, keeping all of that aside, we have a lot of interesting and exciting things to talk about today, chat. Uh, obviously, Want to know your inputs on all of those things? I'm sure everyone has a lot of opinions, but we have a new album, Moon Music, coming soon. We hope, we hope, fingers crossed. Uh, we'll be talking quite a bit about that to start with. We obviously have a new song, Eterna. Uh, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Uh, it was debuted just the other night in Sao Paulo, and um, it's a dance anthem and it sounds incredible and it has a great response already and it's all very exciting we really do want to talk about it a lot i know everyone wants to talk about it and we've had q a's from guy will and johnny already um and we'll be touching about their answers from time to time throughout everything we're discussing today uh, you know they've dropped some really nice like small tidbits here and there and i'm assuming chris will be on for the next one uh for their sixth and final show in sao paulo hopefully he will do a q a as well because uh, these are always so much fun. And um, of course, the big thing is the tour has resumed. 2023 Musical The Spheres World Tour is back. Uh, the first four shows at Sao Paulo have been extremely fun. Um, I think five now. Wasn't last night five? I might be wrong now. But uh, four it's shows. Four. Yeah. It's four. And um, even if you weren't there in the stadium, it's been incredible to follow because of just everything that they've been doing and just like them being back and active and posting uh you know their social media clips and videos and pictures from from the concerts has been so exciting and of course there's been new tracks every night uh, we had color tour last night which is i know is always a fan favorite uh but, you know and it's it's been absolutely crazy honestly i've had not too much time to breathe just like taking in all the new information that we keep getting from uh brazil so it's a very exciting time to be a Coldplay fan and um it feels like the hype is building again and again and again and uh it's good, you know, that's why when they take breaks and then they come back, it always hits so much harder. Beyond today's show, uh, another thing I want to talk about, it's fair to say, it's like, some of our friends in Brazil have had an incredible time, incredible concert experiences. And if you're from Brazil, and if you speak Portuguese, or even if you're not from Brazil, but you speak Portuguese, we are very happy to announce that um, this coming Sunday, we'll be doing our first ever Portuguese live stream uh, with fans from Copa Brazil and Forum Coldplay. Uh, it's very exciting. It's a first for us. So keep a lookout. We did something similar. Uh, we did some Spanish streams earlier when shows happened in Argentina and um, other parts of Latin America. Those streams went really well. We were very happy to be like inclusive of that audience as well because there's so many Copa fans who speak so many different languages as well. So it's really happy for us to do this in Portuguese. And we have obviously a couple of cool things in the works. We always do. Always trying to make uh, good, exciting content for you guys. Um, so, you know, as always, follow us on all the socials. You know where they are. And, uh, you know, consider buying us a coffee. Link in bio, 10% of it all goes to sustain sustainability initiatives, as always. I'm done with my long spiel. Ian, let's get your thoughts on Moon Music, which I think is the first thing that we really need to dig into. We haven't talked about it much on, on here. We haven't been on here for a while. So no. it's good to have you yeah. back. Let's get into it. Coldplay's 10th album, Moon Music. Uh, what do you think? All right. Well, I guess it came firstly with like a, the announcement. I think it was around mid-January, Canadian radio interview, which if we're being honest, not many people were watching. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> it couldn't just Chris, as he's done in the past, drops the bomb, causes mass chaos, hysteria yeah. online, the whole thing, like absolute madness. Um, moon music, second volume. Um, I'm going to say at that time, it was just madness and chaos and all those things. Um, but I, I, I had a really hard time with the title. I don't know about you. Um, I was just like, of all the things they could have called it, like moon music, uh, 
music of the spheres moon music like i don't know how it's going to officially end up with the full title but yeah it was kind of like a sticking point for me for a while but i'm I, now i'm just like i don't care like it's fine <laughs> we we've been through milo xyloto you know if i can say that fine and go with that then moon music shouldn't really be a problem so um but yeah so the title was bugging me for a while because mm -hmm. they they can be very good at titles yeah um and but it's fine let's you know? <laughs> um. Yeah, I think that was my reaction too. I was, uh, I think for me, it was more like, okay, here's the next, next batch of songs and let's appreciate them while they're still, while they're still coming, you know, because uh, we know there's, they're going to stop eventually. So for me, it was initially like, okay, let's do it. We're, we're, let's get the next part of this journey. And then, in each, then I thought about the title because then you start thinking about these things and I was like, yeah, it doesn't hit that hard. You know, I, yeah. um, it wasn't something like that, that I was like feeling as such, but I think now I'm definitely, I feel like they've had worse titles. So it's not, it's not their best title by a long margin, but I feel it's no. also not their worst. So. You know, for Chris, he has thousands of titles in his phone. I, he's shown it a few times, like on interviews and stuff like to land on this one. It feels just like, oh, but yeah, <laughs> we've got more exciting things to talk about, but yeah, the, the title was. Was, was a little bit of a sticking point. The me, only the only defense I have for the title is that Everyday Life is also not the greatest, most exciting title in the world, but that's mm -hmm. our collective Great album. best yeah. album that they've made, according to both of us. So, um, yeah. you know, let's it's see. Up let's see. It's up there. <laughs> let's see. Well, I know some people, yeah, Emily Sink 10th album, I know, right? Oh my God, it's kind of insane to think about. Nathan, yeah, pretty bad title. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Uh, also, someone else, this is, off topic, but someone asking me, where did I get my Headful Dreams poster on the wall? That was a birthday present from someone. I don't know where they got it. So, but they clearly know all I do is co play. So that's, that's what I got. But anyway. Um, but over the last one year, Abby's collection has grown behind him. It's, it's been a fascinating a progress, progression. <laughs> yeah. Uh, hopefully, like in a year or so, it's just going to be surrounded everywhere. But anyway. Um, even if we forget, just forget the title. The the weight of this album is is massive, you know, because uh, we know that new things are coming, and we were kind of brainstorming like general expectations. You know, what should we we be expecting musically? Uh, what should we be excited about for fans? Um, and Ian, I know you have a certain amount of theories about you know the way this next phase of their journey can like develop. Like, so what do you, what what do you want to share about that? Well, we, we, so this is behind the scenes thing. We were working on a what to expect in 2023 video mm -hmm. or stream and it never happened, but we had some notes and uh, the way we were, and this was before Moon Music title came out, but what we were thinking of is they've obviously got this next album coming up and then they've got the musical film and then obviously back to basic self-titled Coldplay is like the final album. Um, so if that's, Running, running order, the musical is probably going to be one of the most creative and most abstract project that they've ever worked on. Mm -hmm. um, that's how I'm kind of seeing it. So Moon Music holds so much promise because it could be the last band's ma biggest mainstream pop album. Like, mm -hmm. and that and that to us is very exciting. You know. Um, yeah, so the, the musical might not be, you know, the most, like a, like I'm trying to say, is a creative endeavor. Mm -hmm. It might be full of anthems too, which would be amazing, and I'd love that. But at the moment, I'm not seeing the musical as that. I'm, I'm seeing it as the creative endeavor rather than the big pop commercial success, mm -hmm. which we've come to expect with the, the, the kind of Milo Zalotto, Head Full of Dreams, right. Music of the Spheres type albums. So... Yeah, this is kind of maybe like the last big pop play album, potentially. <laughs> and I think that's, you know, that's very exciting because those albums have brought us amazing songs. They work so well in the live shows. Mm -hmm. Can't go to a, a Coldplay show now and not hear songs off those albums. You just you just can't do it. So, um, yeah, that's why it's very exciting, I think. So Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, uh, well, another actually. Another thing I'll add to that is, uh, you know, we know that Max Martin is still their main producer for this this record for sure. Um, yeah. 
he's been around. He was there at the Grammys as well with Chris. Uh, no one else from the band was, but he was. So, so he definitely has his you know fingerprints all over this record. Um, yeah, and, and know, he was on Wembley. So even yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. So he, he's he's there. He and and you know, uh, as all uh, Johnny uh, Will and Guy have mentioned, they're still kind of wrapping it up. It's not over and done with. So he's mm. still he's still there. He's still working on it. So we know that there is a lot of pop potential. Now we don't know if it's going to be, you know, uh, what type of pop potential. We it, it, seeing how you know, or t- just based on this one and a half minute clip we have of Eterna. It could be like a dancey, atmospheric album. It could be anything. It really, it's really hard to guess. But we'll, we'll it's, see. it's hard to know at this point. But yeah. you know, those kind of initial impressions of this could be their last big pop push, mm-hmm. um, with a musical being a maybe like I said, a creative endeavor, and then the back to basics album at the end. You know, that that's that's where we are. And a Turner, I don't know how to pronounce it either just yet. <laughs> we'll get there one day. <laughs> um but uh it's showing that promise i think and that's that's exciting so yeah um i think it in latin it means uh etor- eternal or like eternal. everlasting yeah yeah so i get i'm yeah. just going with that pronunciation really um yeah. but you know all of those theories that we were doing was like back in january obviously um and you know but in february we had a lot of like new copay were back in, in in a big sense you know there's quite a bit of media presence and build up, we got a uh, tour announcement for West Coast shows in the US, which, and it all kind of seemed a bit random at the time with all the media and the build up. Um, and there was also that cause of clowning amongst our chat yes. and, and in general. <laughs> and, and many they, fans, yeah. Uh, and they had appearances on SNL and Jimmy Kimmel, uh, both of which went, uh, went over really well. And actually, especially the Jimmy Kimmel one, the clock performance went kind of viral has over a million views on YouTube and over a million views more on TikTok like many times. So, but we didn't get new music. We just got them being back. Um, and now we're in March, the tour is back underway. You know, the Q and A's are happening. They've been very exciting. They've been dropping nuggets of gold on a daily basis. Really, you're kind of like on Twitter all day because of, uh, because of that. Like from the Q and A's, we're interpreting some more answers from Moon Music, um, you know, where it could be, where we should expect it. So is it fair to say that this album, uh, we should expect like later on in the year, at least minimum? Yeah, I think th- I think it's fair to expect the album in the second half of the year now, which mm-hmm. might be a little bit disappointing for some fans, but that's just where we seem to be at now, you know. And some songs will surely be ready enough um, for this time. And I think it's also fair to expect a single for the summer. Obviously, they got the big European tour coming up. Not to say, you know, they're holding back in Brazil, but it's it's not. I don't think it's like that. I do expect. Because obviously, they wanted the free albums by Christmas 2025. It doesn't look like that's happening at all. It's probably going to be 2026 or beyond, or you know, kind of thing. And I think the balance of doing the tour, touring every day, doing all the duties they have to do, all the resting they have to do as well, whilst trying to make a new album, mm-hmm. you know. And we know how, you know, perfectionist they are about it. They want it. They'll want it to be the best it can be, mm-hmm. and they might not be getting enough time to to make it the best they can be. But and you know, they they've got family life. They've got clothing brands to run. You know, it's it's, it's a lot of hard work. <laughs> it's, it's it's a lot of hard work what they're doing, and 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 they've probably yeah overestimated this kind of deadline of three albums by 2025. So yeah, 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 uh, and and and. As as it's as history proves, like Chris loves throwing in a fantastic song right at the last minute to just throw everything off yeah. and push everything back a few more weeks. And mm-hmm. you know, Chris could have been writing some of the best songs ever in the last few weeks, which he wants on this album. So it'll be worth the wait. That's for totally. sure. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, he. Um, you know, I will also say that. Uh, I think that definitely in terms of being perfectionist, uh, like they don't want uh, an X and Y repeat where they sent off an album before they were done with it, really. Um, mm. And that was a difficult recording process. So, and there's no pressure for them to do that anymore. They're way beyond having that kind of industry pressure on them. So they're going to take their time with it. If they feel like it's not ready yet, it could be pushed back. But I just want to you know wrap up on this because let's let's recap what will guy and johnny said will said that the album is at a stage where it's very exciting 
Guy said that they're excited in its development, but not sure when it will be out just yet. And Johnny said they are at the beginning of the end of recording the record. Um, mm. By far, re- extremely vague answers. Um, makes you miss Chris, where he just tells you the date and the time yeah. and the region and how many songs and how long it'll be and who all the, <laughs> who all our collabs are out of nowhere. Yeah. Um, but maybe we get that at the weekend. Maybe we, maybe we do. <laughs> it could be yeah. a very exciting or very boring weekend. We'll see how it goes. But yeah, um, I mean, all those things are actually very exciting. It does lead towards you know showing that it's nearly there. It's nearly there. Mm-hmm. And uh, but that nearly can take a while. Yeah. You know what this and, whole phase reminds me of is post ghost stories, but pre head full of dreams, where we know something is coming. It's already yeah. kind of been revealed. Uh, we just yeah. have to wait it out. Yeah, that was one. And another one was Kaleidoscope, where I think it was November time, where Chris said they're close to finishing an EP. Mm-hmm. And it took until July to come out. So that's like seven months. Yeah. So at the point, of, and this this comes back to also like industry things as well, where vinyls can take six months to produce as well. So at the point they say, finished, good, send it off. Mm-hmm. Like they're into, they have six months potentially just with the vinyl production to get that going so you know fingers crossed they are really there and hopefully there but I, it, it could be a while still i would love it i would love it i would love for it to be it's it's looking like september at the earliest isn't it really yeah i think um i, I really feel like uh, either they will try and capitalize on west coast shows and really try and get it out there before that or i think they will just have their big singles out have announced that it will be out post yeah. the West Coast shows and yeah. before whatever next leg of the story will be. I'm assuming... Exactly how yeah. M- Music of the Spheres 1 was with Higher Power My Universe. And in between that, we also got Music of... Uh, we got People of the Pride. We got Human Heart performances. So you kind of get half the album, if not more, yeah. um, before it actually comes out anyway. you By the time the actual album date comes, it's like one or two songs you didn't hear, so... Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Should be good. Yeah, it should be fun. It's uh, it's it's exciting. As and I said as earlier, we don't know. We're not gonna get this exciting run up to an album too many more times. Uh, if everything goes to plan, we only have to do this like three more times if this is actually happening. So you know, let's enjoy it. Whatever happens, happens. Let's enjoy the build up and the promo. I'm gonna read through the chat here, and then we're gonna get into I think what people also want to talk. Uh, want us to talk about which is uh, Eternal um, yes Nathan said um, and they said the movie is going to take a long time to make yeah. it could push the musical back yeah we that's very difficult for us to guess and for them too because they have no control over uh, I'm assuming it's going to be all animated so it's going to take time for sure mm. um, and... or puppets what's up or puppets yeah <laughs> or puppets we'll see uh, yeah you know, um, a big hype, a turn slaps. Yeah, it does. It does. Uh, do you think after their final album, they will redo uh, yours from the beginning, playing the tours? Movie? I think. Oh, tours. Redo oh, tours. tours. Yeah. Uh, uh, they might. I do. I do. I think that's easy money for them. They can do residencies where they do, you know, I don't know, in Vegas or in London. Parachutes tour will just play parachutes type songs and. Plus Viva La Vida and Sky Full of Stars. And, <laughs> you know, they can yeah. do that. People will love to relive those things. I personally love to relive a Milo show or a Viva show, um, you know. So, yeah, I, I see that as when they say they're touring forever, that's exactly what they're going to fall back on. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, I, you know, and they're going to tour forever. So there has enough and, and they love touring and they love putting on the best show in the world, both in stadiums and, you know, in smaller venues, they'll do their utmost to make it a special experience. So um, we'll see how that goes. I uh, got another question here, which is an interesting one. Um, do you expect any big surprises during the live broadcast in the cinemas? Not technically a live broadcast, but uh, yeah, the cinema show, like the live 2012 is what I'm really calling it. It's That's kind of what uh, it feels like. I mean. Great question, Ilko. Um, yes, I think I, I'm clowning a little bit here, but I think the people who go to the cinemas are quite hardcore and they're throwing in a cinema only um, interview, right? So I think that might have content that is um, interesting and 
maybe hinting towards the future a little bit more, more than just your average behind the scenes backstage um, what type if? of walking around. Go on. I what? can see you thinking deeply here. Yeah. What if that's where they announce the new album? It could be. It could be. Like, I think I think that's one of the hooks that I'm looking forward to. Obviously, the, the refined version of that show will be incredible to watch. And Paul Lugdale will do an amazing job. I'm incredible. convinced. I'm looking forward to that. But this being like a cinema exclusive only interview is quite exciting. Because they know, yeah, like, it's going to be us. It's going to be the hardcore fans there. So. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So we'll we'll see. I mean, there's, we have a lot to look forward yeah. to. Um, We've detoured a little bit, haven't we? We have. We have. Let's get <laughs> let's get to let's get to the other exciting thing that we haven't like really dissected that much. You know, um, Chris mentioned in our interview, as I said, like last August, that they were excited about playing new songs and they knew how they were going to fit. We've seen a little bit of that now with Aterna. Um, you know, we got an excerpt uh, uh, of it during the Light Club. People were you know were theorizing whether it's a remix or if it's the original it is the original but it's like a small part of the original from what will uh is uh, hinting at what are your thoughts um on it i love it i love it i think it's fantastic um i think the midnight remix being there last year was kind of a a test to see if they are going to make a song like that does it actually work in an environment so that kind of you know it was a good test bed um, this sounds like it's just going to be fantastic, though, this song, honestly. It's going to be like, I don't know if it'll be released for summer. I, ho- I hope so. But Im- imagine going, like, partying with this. I don't go partying anymore. I'm too old. I'm a dad. But it, it makes me wish I was, you know, 18 to 24 again. <laughs> and, that uh, you know, you could go out and hear that. Because they've, they've tried to make EDM songs in the past, and they've had massive success with, you know, mm-hmm. Two biggest ones are obviously um, uh, Skyfall Stars and something just like this, but this one really feels like it could be an every weekend you will hear it kind of song. It could, and I think that's that that's very exciting as a as a as as a young person who I like to pretend I am sometimes. <laughs> Don't worry, you're you're young at heart. Um, yeah. No, no, yeah, I agree. About all-time classic potentially, all-time dance floor classic. That's. That's how I'm feeling about it right now. I'm so excited about it. It it is it is pretty pretty amazing. The chat is super excited about it. Uh, it's instant bop. Uh, you know, would uh, people are so uh, hyped about it, and it's very rare to get songs, yeah, a small snippet of a song that gets everyone excited immediately. Is everyone always? Some people at worst will be like, oh, okay, I don't know about this one yet. Let me listen to the whole thing, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But this one has got everyone hooked immediately. Everyone's trying to find the most HD, 4K, high quality, 60 <laughs> FPS video and then plug it in and then have it saved on their phone somehow and just listen to their one minute loop again and again. Yeah. Um, headphones I, on. Headphones yeah. on, full blast, everything. And uh, a couple of things I do want to dissect in it is obviously the first one is the bass. Uh, uh, I, we don't know if there's a collab on this or not because we know uh, now Rogers did work with Coldplay on something, mm-hmm. but it could be just be Guy. This could be all Guy, and its bass is obviously a huge standout, very funky, really gets you in the groove immediately. And of course, we have Chris's falsetto, uh, which at the end, yes. or, I don't know where that'll get placed in the song, but that could be like the chorus, maybe you know, where they just kind of. I like... feel I feel like um, you know how skyfall stars kicks into another gear in the latter part and mm-hmm. you know it kind of changes away from what it, i think that'll be like that um i saw a lot of people comparing it to legends which is the track that mm-hmm. was put on youtube that probably shouldn't have been but hell it's there and <laughs> you know, no one cares but it is a little bit like that uh, as well with the falsetto i'm not always the biggest fan when chris goes that high with his voice to sing and like to maintain that in a performance, I guess that's why it's the Alien Head song as well. <laughs> but uh, yeah. uh, I'm not always the biggest fan, but it works. It works so well in this in this one. And uh, you know, like you said, guys, bass in the start when they're looping in. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I can't discern all the lyrics just yet, but what I'm hearing is the theme of togetherness. You know, this kind of thing, which is typical Coldplay. Yeah. Um, so it's it's like typical Coldplay, amazing drum and bass going on. Johnny's bits. I love Johnny's bits. Johnny's mm-hmm. like kind of noodling. Mm-hmm. Um, honestly, I'm so excited for this song. So excited. 
so excited. Johnny said in his Q&A that he was very excited about yeah, Moderna. So it's one of, one of his favorites. favorites from the new batch of songs. Yeah, that's, and that's, yeah. I think that's a good mark. Whatever Johnny likes ends up, ends up being a really good song, for sure. Yeah. Um, and and uh, another reason why I know I think this is going to be a bop is because I saw a video of Will while he's um, yes. setting up the rhythm. And he's just having the time of his life behind that mask. I've never seen him move that much during the light cup section uh, before. So it definitely... Well, apparently he gets mad. He gets mad. That's what Johnny said, right? Yeah, he does. He can't see. He can't see. (laughs) To be be honest, he has like the least amount of eye room, which is not... (laughs) But uh, anyway, Uh, no, he was was fully in the groove and it was amazing to see him like that. Like he's... There's a few songs he really goes for it and you know, classics like Viva, sometimes on the drums for stuff like Politic or even People of the Pride, he's even really going for it. Mm-hmm. Um, but this one was like, he's so into it, so into it. He was, exactly. And this was like a debut performance for them as well. you got to remember that, which is yeah. nerve wracking for them. They're like, shit, is this going to work? Are people going to like this? Nobody's dancing on the front row. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. And I can speak as a fan who's been to like a show where they've debuted something new. As a fan, you don't know what to do. You, your instant feeling is like panic. <laughs> like, shit, this is new. Like, that's already a big sensation. And then you're trying to work out, is it good? Is it not? Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, I mean, if you was a fan there on that night, or even last night, I think they played it as well. Um, so happy you got to hear like it. Full right. quality, uncompressed. Exactly. So happy for you guys. I can't wait. I can't wait. I can't wait either. I think uh, it's so exciting. It's so ex- This is why we need a Phil in every band because he's the one who reassured these guys like, no, people are loving it. Don't worry. Get around. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, and I think from the videos I saw last night, they seem to be like, even if there were nerves, they, they didn't seem to have any on that song. No. And I know they changed the light club around a bit. Um, and obviously him for the weekends come in and something just like this has moved. That's that's a big thing for them to, you know, move those things up as they've mentioned in the past. So, no, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. We we, we will so, get into the rest of the setless yes. stuff that's happening. I'm gonna quickly just go over the chat. Um, yeah, a question: What are the words in Eterna? I've listened hundred times, can't figure out. Nor can I. Don't worry, <laughs> I'm right there with you. Yeah, just a lot of excitement. Uh, question: I wonder how long Moon Music will be. I hope it's an hour. Or so honestly, I'll take an hour of Eterna. Just give me that, and for like an hour, hour. It'll be about forty, maximum of forty-five minutes. 40, That's, they, I, they made that rule after X and Y, I think. Yeah, now, even with the double album, it was fifty-eight minutes. It was, so was it okay? Something I trust like, you. I remember. I trust you. <laughs> I remember. I used to count my commute by how how quickly yeah. I could listen to Sunrise and Sunset. Yeah. Anyway. Um, yeah, so I think uh, I think moving into these songs it was a good choice. Yeah, no, I agree absolutely. Let's see how how things go. Obviously, this is a new one, but we've already heard another new song, but it's been there for a while, so people have kind of forgotten about it. Which is a wave, uh, mm-hmm. which is another huge favorite for the online community. Very calming, beautiful piece of music. Um, what are your thoughts now that you've heard these both of them? I don't know if it's the full version of a wave. If there's anything else that we're not listening to, but like everything that you've heard so far, um, any reaction? Well, I love a wave. I think it's an amazing way to close the show. Um, and you know, the music is absolutely stunning. I don't know though if it will be a um, moon music. Oh, I feel like, yeah, it probably might. It might be. I think it'd be a great album closer. Um, but I don't know if it'll be on Moon Music or if it might be on self-titled Coldplay as like the album closer there mm-hmm. or as like the last kind of song. Mm-hmm. Um, for me, it's kind of like a, it's a bit dark, I think, as well, because the song is kind of one you might want played at your funeral, which you don't <laughs> think about too often, but it is, it's, it's, it has that ethereal energy, um, I think, so. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and I know Chris, uh, from his songwriting, he's, he does allude to you know afterlife things from time to time so he does yeah yeah it's, yeah. it's... uh color dora being a big big example of that yeah. in many ways um and uh, you know i'll tell you a wave would where it would fit really well is that we once made this playlist uh called play songs to listen to in the middle of the night with lights down and everything uh yeah. that, it would fit when really you well when you're sad at 4 a.m when yeah. you're sad at 4 a.m 
um, <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. I've never done that. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think uh, here, Emily, super excited about the wave. I need a, a wave song for real. Yes, please. Yeah, I agree. Uh, we all do, but we got to be patient. Hopefully, it, maybe it's now, maybe it's later, but whenever it will be there. Um, moon music for me now is shaping up to be so exciting. So exciting in many ways. This, and Eterna has definitely been a big, uh, big reason for that. Uh, but this, that's not the only exciting thing that's happened in Brazil. There's been a lot. <laughs> There's been a lot of setlist changes. Every night the setlist has been different. Um, I'm just going to rattle off the songs that have already, that the new different songs that have been played on top of all the other amazing hits that they're already playing that we all know of already. Hmm. The first night was obviously a more standard setlist that we've gotten used to. But then we've, since then, we've had Color Tour last night, Gravity. Uh, the Seeb's mm-hmm. remix of Him for the Weekend. Uh, something just like this in full. Uh, mm-hmm. Obviously, we've had Eterna. We've had Don't Panic. We've had Daddy, Cry, 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 A Head Full of Dreams. And uh, on top of that, we've had uh, Sue George. Uh, yes. Who's come on stage as well, a Brazilian legend. Mm-hmm. If, it's Sandy fucking as well. fantastic, is what it is. Sandy and uh, the church's singer, what she called? Laura, Laura is it? Laura, Laura did uh, Cry, Cry, Cry yeah. last night, and Sandy yeah. did uh, Magic as well. That's another one we have now. Magic, yes. In English Magic. this time. Um, yeah. <laughs> so it's it's been kind of incredible. I mean, the Brazilian fans have had the short end of the stick, frankly, with shows getting postponed and, you know, the mm. Sao Paulo venue being kind of having its own difficulties with the rain and the relentless rain in general. So yeah. I kind of am really happy they're being rewarded with such an enriching experience. But uh, what are your thoughts? We can go through these one by one. What are your thoughts on these setlist changes that we're getting? But just overall, I think if you can't experiment with your setlist in Latin America where the crowds are that good, mm-hmm. then you, you probably don't want to do it anywhere else anyway. So they, they deserve that, yeah. um, I think. And you know, there's obviously a big push from online fans for certain songs like Coloratora, obviously Charlie Brown as well. I was very impressed with the what the community did there uh, for that song. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's 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 genuinely madness as a, you know, <laughs> from a Coldplay fan who you're just used to the same, maybe one change every five shows um, kind of thing. So yeah, amazing to see. Let's go one by one. Let's go one by one. Let's start with last night's Coloratura. We got a speech in the middle of it as well. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know if you had a chance to listen to the whole thing from different phone recordings, but what are your thoughts on on how this version of Coloratura Live works? I was I was amazed they actually played it. And what struck me most is they've been working on this. They've been trying to make this work because obviously you don't just throw that speech in there. The visuals were upgraded, the lasers, like every... Did you see the wristbands as well with the yeah. orange, green, uh, purple? Insane. So they've been trying really hard to get to this point where they can, they can perform it. And there was always that spot I felt where, you know, finishing up on the B stage, you can do that. You can start there and go into the next song. Um, I, what What is it? Moons? Planet. Yes. Planets, moons, stars, stars whichever home. segment yeah. of the show, whichever next segment of the show going back to the A stage, it was always there that was probably the most likely that Coloratora could fit. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm happy they tried it. The speech, um, I thought it was quite, quite powerful. I, I'll be honest, a little bit distracting, I think, because I'm so invested in the music. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, that's my only take there. But the speech itself is all about acceptance, which is so important. To, to, to get across and so typical of Coldplay to try and give across they've mixed speeches so well in the past like um with, with shows head full of dreams obviously um Muhammad Ali speech in yeah. the Everglow as well um so yeah I'm I needs to grow on me I need a few more listens as well but I'm happy they tried it and I'm so happy for Brazilian fans and also the online community because we follow everything like you say um that we get this so yeah absolutely um, I'm getting a um, question here, like, what are your thoughts on Color Tour now? Do you guys still think it should always be there? Well, uh, frankly, we, uh, you know, I'm assuming you were also in this, is that I did not mind it not being there. I actually thought no. it was fine to not play it in a stadium, hmm. which is a highly unpopular opinion. That I don't. And I think it. that's what Chris's 
dad was telling fans apparently <laughs> from what i read online as well like or maybe it was phil um yeah we just don't think it's gonna it's good for a stadium but then that's what they'll tell us to our faces and then in the back they're doing all the silo band work and <laughs> rehearsing it and putting the speeches in there so don't um, ask anyone personally i i don't mind it i can live without it i think you're the same mm. but if it's there gonna enjoy it yeah absolutely how it is yeah, absolutely. I think uh, it's not a song they'll never play ever again after this tour. They will, I think it will, as long as they're going to keep touring, we'll keep listening to it. Maybe not regularly, but sometime, some way, it's always going to be there. Because I think they're very proud of it. Um, mm. And uh, they should be. Um, in terms of the speech uh, for last night, I, I agree with you that it's distracting because I'm obviously the big fan. I want to know and listen to every single second of each beat of music that's being played. But for a local, I understand why they would pay attention to the speech. And in the background, there's this beautiful music playing. It creates this tension. And then you like burst open that tension with uh, Johnny's uh, solo um, riff. And I think in that, in that sense, it works really well. Um, yeah. So it's interesting. It's hard for me to like say something super definitive about this right now based on the 240p clip that I saw. But, um, <laughs> but you know, I'd, I'd like to see that kind of a couple of more times. I have absolutely no idea if it's going to stay on the set list, if they hated it, if, if this is the last time they'll play it. Who yeah. knows? We'll see what happens. But um, It's hard to know. It's hard to know. We'll, we'll see if it, if it turns up. I mean, I hope they try it again in Brazil. Mm -hmm. uh, they've got quite a few more shows, I think. Seven more shows yeah. still to go in Brazil. So a lot of chances to try it out, see how it goes. Um, so, yeah. Let's see. Let's see. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm glad they gave it a shot. Um, mm. I have a question. What did they say in the speech? I have been busy and working all day. Uh, I would mm. check out. I mean, it's online. I don't remember what it was, but it was about uh, basically, you know, togetherness and acceptance and working through your hard times. Long story yeah, short. I think, is, um, I, th I, th I saw a clip. I might retweet it with extra so that everyone can watch it then. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. Oh, Brooke here with the answer. It's it's a Maya uh, Angelo clip. Okay, um, yeah, I gotta I gotta check it out and then rehearse it just like I rehearsed uh, Louis Armstrong's small bit. Yes. <laughs> so um, we spent a lot of time with Cordura. Let's quickly go to the other ones. So There's Gravity that, mm. that happened with the fan. Um, mm. Second time they played Gravity. Who thought that would ever happen? Forget once. It's been now played twice on this tour. Um, yeah. Always a special song, and I think Chris was much more ready to play it this time as well. Yes, uh, yes. Yeah. I, I think I think there'll be more opportunists who will want to get up and maybe play that from now, seeing it work again. Mm -hmm. um, Love Gravity, great yeah. song. Fantastic song. And I think their crew uh, has also been instructed, like they, this is clearly practice, like they're open-minded about taking fans on yeah. stage now because they have that... Uh, headphones and, and they also write on the set list tbc at that yeah. point like so if they've seen something then maybe there's a chance maybe and if they don't yeah. see anything maybe we'll just get let somebody go which i don't mind but some people might <laughs> so, yeah. so practice practice I, okay guys that's what i'm, I'm happy with that yeah. i don't mind it um then we had the Steve's remix of him for the weekend which obviously went into eterna um mm. i'll say it, i loved hearing this again it's been so long and it's so hype um but what are your thoughts on it uh i like it i think it works well in the light club i just think the original is such a stadium filling anthem that locals love so much that it's too hot to move around that's my personal take on it mm -hmm. um it works so well after viva um it gets everyone in the stadium singing along on the original the remix is way more funky. It's so fun, but mm -hmm. um, and it works. Like I say, it still works so well. Uh, and when you compare him for the weekend versus something just like this, the crowd's energy is just so much better on on him for the weekend. And they tried that, I think, in the first show with like, can we put orphans here? And it's like, yeah. no, we have to put him for the weekend because it's just too much of a too much of a banger. <laughs> really. It's too well known. Um... Yeah. Yeah. Like uh, here in the U.S., I can tell you, it's such a popular song. It was their most uh, well-performing song in the U.S. last year, if I'm not wrong. Still. Yeah, I think uh, I think it was. Yeah. yeah. Even more than my universe. My universe came second. So uh, um, it's it's hard for them to kind of play around with it too much. Also, I think there's that element of once when Weaver starts, even your most local of local fans 
who's just in the last row, who's just been dragged there because their friend wants to go or whatever. <laughs> they all know Viva La Vida. So they're all going to get hyped for it. And then they're like, okay, that's the one song I know about Coldplay and I don't know anything else. Or if they have that reaction. If you instantly hit them with a hit like him for the weekend, they're like, oh, wait, I've heard this too. You know, that's kind of like... Yeah, um, yeah. or something just like this. And, that, and that's why Eva can work. Um, I just think the energy from the crowd is better on him for the weekend. I'll be interested to see. Yeah, because it kind the the reason they've put the C remix for him for the weekend in the Light Club is because it goes so much better into a Turner, I think. So yeah, anyway. absolutely. We'll see. One more. We'll, we'll monitor this process <laughs> as it goes on. <laughs> we will. We will. As long as they're experimenting, you know, it's it's so cool and exciting for us. Another one big prop I want to say, regardless of what anyone thinks about it. The fact that now Chris knows two songs in sign language is very impressive. And yes. you kind of have to give that uh, credit where credit's due. I, I can barely learn, you know. I think he's very good at sign language. I think he's just being shy about it. Quick um, learner. He's a quick learner. You know? yeah. uh, and then obviously, uh, we had something just like this in full. We talked about this a little bit right now. So, you know, when it's there, it's interesting. Um, mm. It works in the light club too, because they play the big the big parts of it that everyone wants to jam out to. Um, mm-hmm. Then obviously we had Eterna. We kind of talked about that already. Then we have Don't Panic, which come, sometimes comes in and out of the C stage. Sometimes it's there, sometimes yeah. it's not. I still like it. I still enjoy it. It's always a nice throwback. It's, it's also, a so solid, like, solid C stage choice, isn't it? Yeah, it's also the good story to it, you know, for people. They can say, like, this is when we used to record and kind yeah. of like... Back, back in the day. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was always the same kind of story. And then... Stop it. Get Johnny to sing. Everybody cheer for Johnny. It's a crowd pleaser. It works. Um, yeah. Then we got Daddy, uh, which, oh my God, we're getting everyday life songs now. Like, what is happening? <laughs> Incredible. <laughs> that, that was that was a big surprise, actually. And I, I, I've only seen the clip that was probably on Coldplay's story. Yeah. Um, and I thought it was great. It's so difficult to play that song well on piano. Mm. I know from my average piano playing skills. <laughs> yeah. But uh, to, to do it in a stadium in front of, let's say, 60,000 people, maybe it's closer to 70 in Sao Paulo, mm. um, with the delays that happen, it's very, with Chris Martin breathing over you, <laughs> like, the pressure is insane. And, and these people who get up on stage and do this is uh, just, my heart goes off to, uh, that could never be me. That could never, never be me. Good. Could never do it. Um, you know, uh, still, I mean, uh, Guy mentioned it, that they are attempting to do some everyday life songs here and there. They are rehearsing it. Yeah. They're open-minded to it. I, when he said that I didn't think Champion of the World, I, I mean, I didn't think Daddy, I thought Champion of the World or like Orphans mm. at maximum. I definitely mm. didn't expect Daddy. Yeah. Then, of course, we got Cry, 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 which was rehearsed, completely planned out uh, mm-hmm. with uh, Lauren. Uh, Lauren or Laura, Laura? I need to listen to Churches more. Um, yes. But uh, Churches I, singer. Yeah, uh, and um, I haven't had a chance to listen to that version yet. Have you, Ian? Yes, I did. Mm-hmm. Cry, cry, cry is such a fun song to play, mm-hmm. um, like musically. There's some really cool old town funk riffs, so, so it's, it's, it's a fun song to play. So I, I know why they they'd like to try that out. Um, yeah. No, no, nothing bad to say, really. Nothing bad to say, right. absolutely. All I can say is that Angel Moon now has three songs on the set list, which I her powers are increasing every yeah, day. Yeah, she, she wasn't there, I don't think, on this one. <laughs> she wasn't there. But she, she could have been. She gave she, her she's blessings. supposed to be. Yeah, she, yeah she, okay. She gave her blessings to it. Good to know. She's um, too famous. I knew, I knew Emily would love uh, Cry, 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 because I, I know that she loves that song from Back to the Future, obviously. Big throwback. Yes. Um, then... I think for me the biggest surprise was a head full of dreams. Yes. We got a head full of dreams on a stage, away, like not on a head full of dreams story. Like that is absolutely insane. Um, what were your thoughts on it? Let's stick to that. Without I think, the Charlie I think, Chaplin uh, speech. Well, obviously the the yeah, the the film live in Sao Paulo opens with head full of dreams, and it's such iconic like video that. Even the, just the video they've uploaded on YouTube is, is iconic. Mm-hmm. Um, so many good memories attached to that song. I think Chris was probably just feeling a little bit nostalgic um, <laughs> and was like, I want to do that again. That was so fun. And I know this crowd is going to give me the energy I want. Yeah. Um, I, to me, 
it, I, I don't know if it worked. Um, obviously, they didn't have all the pyro they normally have um, where, when they did have a head full of dreams tour. But nice to see them try it out again, you know, and, and fans who were there five, six years ago be feeling nostalgic as well whilst that's happening. So, yeah. great stuff. Our very um, own Rafa is having the time of his life. He's listened to I all know. these songs now. Um, <laughs> incredible. Absolutely amazing. Yeah, I but think... I, um... I, I don't know if that one's going to stick around. Uh, fun fact, I'd actually like A Head Full of Dreams. I think it could work as a B-stage song, just Chris on the piano. I think that could be cool. Mm-hmm. You know, like in Head Full of Dreams, the movie? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like when he's just messing around with the synths. Mm-hmm. If he did a, like a piano acoustic, I think that could be cool. Absolutely. It's when in the start of the documentary is when he's just kind of saying it very quietly. It it somehow yeah. still works, you know, he still makes it yeah. sound very beautiful. So, um, and, and you still get the sing along. You can still get people to sing along with you like you would in Everglow, like you would with Let Somebody. You still have that. Oh, like, yeah, yeah, you yeah. can still do that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Apologies for my singing. That was terrible. We just lost like <laughs> half our viewers. Right there. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, but guys. I want to I wanna ask you a question. Now, would you rather have a head full of dreams there or hurts like heaven, which is what Johnny mentioned yesterday, which set fire to Twitter? Yes. Uh, that was incredible. Well, in that specific slot or just in the set in general? Uh, let's say the set in general. Yes, I would love that. Yeah. <laughs> I would, I would, I think I tweeted that myself, but swap out humankind for me. I think that could work so well as a back to the um, main stage from the C stage kind of thing. You could have. Milo Zalotto with the intro. You could even have like a, an, an extended MX with m- more going on to give them enough time to get back to the stage. Um, it is quite high for Chris to sing, it's and especially that late, that late in the show. But that would be like, that would send me insane, I think. I would, yeah, I don't know. I'd, I'd transcend. Yeah, absolutely. That. I, think... I have so many good memories. Like I know a lot of our fans are younger now especially with people who maybe watch this but going to a milo show back in the day that was when they opened with that was just incredible so so much fun energy and i don't feel that personally with humankind so mm-hmm. i'd love that mm-hmm. it'd have me bouncing crying jumping you know <laughs> all the rest listen listen i, I the only different uh, the one difference i want to give for humankind is that chris has now started throwing confetti out of his hands and uh, I yes. don't, and it's super fun and iconic now. I love it. I kind of will miss if that ever goes away. But uh, I agree. I think. Uh, listen, I was. I didn't have the chance to ever go to a Milo Zilotto show, so I've never heard "Hurts Like Heaven" live ever. Uh, so for me, obviously, it would be like dreams uh, achieved right there. So I think I'm open to it. If they're in this experimental mood then fuck it, why not? Play every every single exactly. opener, right? Like, let's just go for it. Um, so it's it's it, it's just so exciting. Well, let's see let's see if that will ever be there or or if not. Uh, we can talk about the last few things. We're gonna start wrapping up this stream now, and just um, with all the with everything that's happening. We've talked about new music. We talked about Eterna. We talked about Away. We've talked about set list changes. But they've also added a, a few more tricks here and there. Do you wanna? Talk us through some of those, Ian. Well, you mentioned it really. It was like the confetti with Chris, Chris's hands. First time I saw that, I was like, "This is too fun." There's, you know, there's already so much confetti and so many streamers at a Coldplay show, and he's like, "I just feel like he was feeling like everybody else gets to press the button for the confetti cannons or the, you know, the fireworks. Mm. I want to be the guy who actually presses it for once." Yeah. So, yeah. Um, but he seems to be having fun, and it's a fun trick actually. And they they shoot quite a bit, so it creates a cool effect. It um, does. Yeah. Absolutely. You could do that with "Hurts Like Heaven," maybe. <laughs> <laughs> that would be um, amazing. No, I'll stop. I'll stop jumping on that bandwagon for now. Are we gonna change? No, it's, our... it's good fun. Ian, are we gonna change our Sky Flu Stars agenda to "Hurts Like Heaven" agenda? Is that what's? Yeah, happening? that's the 2023 official Coldplay Extra agenda. agenda. Hurts like heaven. The Hurts like heaven campaign. You can sign up. On sign uh, up now. I don't know where. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I might be on board. We had that. a successful 2022 with Sky Flu Stars. It did well. It did really well. So there was some. We can good... pat ourselves on the back there. Well done to me and you. Yeah, 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 absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> I'm, I'm, that's not like 
the band put any effort in playing it or or any of that so it's us we made well, it happen like in our interview chris said he feels like nobody likes it a new pop song that nobody really likes which is so not true and when it, when he said that my i was like what's he saying what's he saying like it's the most like you go on tiktok or you go on instagram reels like every third thing is sky full of stars like montages and everything so absolutely i think he just has that feeling that any new song that they put out since milo is just like hated on so he's just like i don't know when people i guess don't like it <laughs> but he's so wrong that that song's been way too successful to be getting that kind of yeah absolutely uh, affirmation i don't know We've also yeah. had, um, they've kept the screens in the back from the Bonus mm-hmm. Eric shows. We thought that was a one-off for their live stream, but nope. It seems to be a more permanent feature. I like it. Yeah. I think it adds more to the show. It's no yep. complaints at all. Um, I think it's officially called the J- the Jet Stream or something like that. That's what they called it. Interesting. Some of the technical people, I think I said, saw that. But I love it. I hope they bring it to Europe and the US and wherever they may go on the tour. I think it's great. Um, I also don't need it either <laughs> yeah it's it's, it's uh, like a small cherry on the stuff. top of the icing of the cake honestly exactly yeah um great that it's there even if for whatever technical reason it can't be there i have no issues i'm not going to complain about it too mm. much um and obviously we've also had a, a new photographer uh mm. for for the band i do want to mention her anna she's been doing as we i think we all can agree an absolutely sensational job i'm going to put up some of our favorite pictures here but um ian you are you're really good at understanding aesthetics and photography and design so any thoughts you want to give well us? I, i'm i'm above average <laughs> Better but, than uh, me. Uh, no honestly like we were already getting amazing content anyway um you know last year with stevie and also tim toda yeah um but it feels like they've really leveled up with anna and i i mean that with the greatest of respects to both of the two photographers last year these images are absolutely stunning Incredible. and get you know when you, you get the app notification that photos have been uploaded um or you see maybe someone's tweets like oh there's a new one from the app or coldplay's official media sharing it's like wow like every photo so far mm. um real skill to doing that so massive massive props to anna absolutely get, fo- get following her on a personal yeah oh, that's <laughs> Uh, I think she has Instagram and she has Twitter. So. And TikTok okay. too, if I believe. If I'm TikTok not. too, yeah. So yeah, she's all, just like, send her love and support. That's all. Um, she's doing a great job. Any encouragement that she gets is, is good. Look at that one with Guy. That's oh, insane. What a picture. I mean... Well, uh, the firework one with Chris is still insane. Like. Yeah. I think Stevie did an incredible... Stevie did an incredible job of scaling heights, quite literally, to get all types mm. of overhead shots. Uh, Tim did a lot of great close-up pictures at the, uh, especially in Buenos Aires in the la- latter half of last year. But I think the way Anna is capturing the band is kind of insane uh, right now. She's really, really getting it right so far. So really hope that we continue getting this. I think content. her latest tweet was something like, uh, she was stressed because she don't know if she doesn't know herself if she's got good images. <laughs> she, you got to think about it. It's raining like hell. You click it once you don't have time to check if it was a good one you've got to move to the next bit yeah she must be yeah so pleased when she comes back to the computer and sees like she she got these ones absolutely absolutely so we're you know super happy send her all love support hopefully we are in for a lot of amazing interesting content for the rest of the year oh yeah one other comment here my favorite is the one with chris's arms out in the boring rain yes yeah that's a really 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 good shot too so um yeah, absolutely amazing. Um, all good so far. You know, the, this last week and a week or so that they've been back, been it's been quite a lot. It's been a lot of fun um, kind of seeing, being back into the Copa universe. So much is happening. Um, and yeah, I, I'm having a lot of fun. Hope long may it continue. Any final thoughts, Ian? Um, I think we can do like just a quick, if anyone's got a question thing. Yes. Um, but... Let's, between me and you, whilst that's happening in the chat, Mm -hmm. give me a random thought that you think might happen this year with Coldplay. (laughs) Um, Sorry for putting you on the spot. Yeah, you did. Uh, (laughs) I think um, this is going to be hard. I think, uh, I feel like they are going to do something um, in their live shows that we 
will kind of either love a lot or hate so i feel like whatever the new song is i have a feeling that it's not going to be like an easy crowd pleaser i think it's going to be super experimental and i feel like half the fandom will absolutely fall in love with the band all over again and half will be like that's it i'm out i can't do this anymore <laughs> you know <laughs> that's my hot take because i'll tell you why I, last year if you'd asked me this i'd be like oh who knows they might have done some collab here and there but at this point they can invite almost any artist in the world to come on stage on sea stage with them and they have mm. they've had all types yeah. of incredible artists they've done all, almost all genres of music they have won all the awards they need to they putting on the biggest tour of the 21st century currently i mean the, the way this is going this is probably going to be at least in the top 3 if not the number 1 um, i think it's going to be number 1 yeah. i think it's easily think, going to be number 1 yeah. but you know and they still have yet to go to the rest half of the world you know into the eastern mm-hmm. hemisphere so there is still a lot more to do and go on so i feel like the only thing that will come down to is just online fandom opinions and and not i don't want to say controversies but just like thoughts of how their journey is progressing that's kind of what so i'm most think, excited about you think they're going to stir the pot a bit more yeah i i feel like people people got that oh my god how can it get even more experimental than bts and angel moon I I feel like we haven't seen the last of an experimental couple. No. no. So you think they're going to level up on that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think right. I turn as just a small window into that world that they <laughs> God knows what they're cooking up, but they clearly don't they don't care anymore and they're no. having so much fun. Like so much fun. Mm, yeah. It's really exciting to see. Well, your 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 take on it is so much fun than mine. <laughs> so <laughs> I was going to say something boring like a, an acoustic show uh small hit no I wasn't I was uh I think this year's this is a little bit geeky I guess but it's going to be a big year for VR and AR and I think Apple have rumored to push they're going to go ahead with their headset this year mm-hmm. and tech companies like Meta, Sony, Microsoft, Samsung have all got VR headsets yeah and Coplay are no strangers to VR yeah. they been using it or trying to get people to use it a little bit since 2014 mm-hmm. with ghost stories um there was like this thing i think they were supposed to do the whole show but in the end they just did like 90 seconds of sky full of stars and it was it was amazing i don't know it, it was but it was only limited to you had to have a certain phone and the headset and it, they did it to, in uh, 2017 chicago yeah 2017 as well yeah. so there's, yeah. there's there's been a couple of VR instances already and with it being so big this year and I think you know there could be something in that um 2017 was that was a big one with a head full of dream stadium show you could put yourself in different parts of the stadium which was pretty cool yeah um 2021 don't know if people remember that year a little bit like covid they also did the Joytopia thing which mm-hmm. is not really VR <laughs> it's AR like... it's AR in a way eh, well, it's, no, it's no, kind of no. like a I don't know like... call it what you want but I think yeah so Long story short, I think they might try something with VR, AR, MR. MR is mixed reality. So yeah. I think something like that might be on the horizon this year cuz they seem to love experiment with with that stuff. Yeah, absolutely. I I can see that happening. Well, at least they flirt flirt have flirted with it in the past. Then then very open minded with trying out new technologies. So I they definitely know all those who like, you know, uh, like look down upon new developments. They'll give everything a shot. Who knows? No one, Chris. I I feel like he's already trying out this Jack TPD to come up with new lyrics. Who, yeah, who yeah, knows? he's using it to write songs. Who yeah. knows? Who <laughs> knows? Um, we got a, we got one or two questions here. One um, a oh, one was an acoustic any acoustic session. Yeah, I mean they might if they do promo shows for Moon Music. I think we can we can expect an acoustic performance here, and there were like small small intimate venues, either it's for TV or just like a promo show here or there. Um and the other question is uh, when are you going to have another Coldplay quiz night? <laughs> I'm glad that went, went over so well. It was so experimental from our side too. We were very nervous about how it was all going to work out, but I think it was a good success. So Yeah, it was it was a lot of hard work from us on our side to get it all ready. Um but we were so happy so many people enjoyed it and had so much fun. Um we uh yeah, we we can do more of them. I just don't want to can't do it every weekend. Yeah. and it's also, one band <laughs> we don't have that much, <laughs> so, there's have only that so much <laughs> trivia we can come up with we also don't have um, that many prizes how many <laughs> every week yeah prizes, I mean, 
um, yeah. but we but we are it was such a success that we are definitely planning on making it a regular feature for sure. Yeah. Um, and as and as you guys have seen, we're not shy of like trying new things on this stream and all the content we're making. So I'm glad that it worked. Um, I'm seeing. A I think once here. once every three months, something like that. Yeah, once every, especially when there's a lull, I think that that's when it will be the best. Right now, yeah. there's so much happening. I don't see a need for us to put out a quiz just yet. Yeah. Uh, but soon, soon, be patient. It'll come. Um, and uh, we got a suggestion. I think we should do finish the lyrics as a part of the quiz. We'll we'll, we'll try. We'll see. <laughs> yeah, that's a great. That's a good suggestion. We'll it's a good suggestion. Learn next time. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. With that, I don't have anything else, Ian. Um, I thank you for your time. I'm now going to go watch my favorite soccer team lose a game again. Um, but, uh, chat, thank you again for joining us. It was so much fun. Ian, I thank you for coming back after so many months. Hope the dad TV nice. continue uh, going well. And we'll see thank you guys you soon. Me. We'll see you guys soon. All right. Take care. Bye-bye. Mm.